Now, I would like to hand over to uh, Marusha and Paul. I think, Marusha, you will be starting. And I'm looking forward to what you have to tell us about the Transport Data Commons. What is it? <laughs> Thanks very much, Daniel. And indeed, good morning to all of you in, in Washington, D.C. And uh, good afternoon, or even good evening, perhaps on a Friday evening, for those who are joining us online from different uh, locations. Um, so what is the premise behind the Transport Data Commons Initiative? A simple one that uh, you already, Daniel, alluded to, but perhaps we can capture it in the famous quote by Lord Kelvin. If you cannot measure it, you cannot improve it. So what is the problem that we have identified when we got together behind this idea? Well, that still today, as you all told us, publicly available data remains at best difficult to access across many fragmented databases. Sometimes transport data exists, but there is no open access to it. And even uh, when it exists and is publicly available, oftentimes it's not regularly collected, it is hard to compare and aggregate because it's not harmonized, and far too often public available data is of poor quality or is not even collected at all. And all these happens across countries, and it gets particularly acute when we want to have data related to low and middle income countries. So as a result of this panorama, what we have is many international development organizations with their partner governments stepping in to collect data for a given objective or perhaps for a transport subsector. Sometimes they make these data publicly available and we certainly have to thank them for the efforts. We should be grateful for this wonderful job that is supporting policymakers and also allowing us to do further research. But it is also true that as a result of these uh, different efforts, we are left with a, a variety of indicators, multiple websites, uh, in most cases, PDF documents that are perhaps not the most readable of formats. And from that, it is very difficult to cross-check data and compile consistent time series. Not to mention, of course, the extensive resources that are spent on the extracting, the adjusting, the checking, the use of the data, and colleagues, more often than what we would actually like to, uh, to admit, we are duplicating efforts. So what is all this telling us? Well, an obvious thing, isn't it? It is telling us that a common, shared, and frequently updated database for the transport sector is not publicly available yet. Because this is precisely where the vision for the Transport Data Commons Initiative comes in. Our vision is to develop a common data platform where all participating entities can both contribute and extract data on the transport and climate nexus. By now, you must be wondering what are the distinctive uh, elements of this vision compared to the ongoing efforts that uh, other entities are individually taking, which are many, as, as, as we know. Well, the following five distinctive uh, uh, benefits that we see or distinctive elements that we see. First one, a common data platform that acts like a one-stop shop. Second, that is openly available and accessible. Third, that it's regularly updated and verified. Fourth, that is a mutually beneficial exchange of information between those collecting data and those providing data. And five, an effort by multiple data contributors and by multiple donors as well. What could be the benefits of such a shared effort in the medium term? We've got another set of five benefits here for you. One, a shared value that the individual participating entities couldn't achieve on their own. Two, savings in resources and money. Three, reduce state data gaps. Four, improved quality of modeling, evaluation, impact assessment and reporting of transport projects with more effective support to low and middle income countries in particular. And five, a tool for international development organizations, national and subnational governments, researchers, data managers, and civil society alike. So this is the vision that we are bringing to you today. So probably you are wondering, who are we? Well, today we are 30 international entities that you see represented on the screen uh, and growing. Thanks, Verana, for, uh, for, for showing us the screen. And um, it all started, as uh, Daniel alluded to, back in May last year, where 21 entities and 25 people gathered at a co-creation uh, workshop at the fringes of the International Transport Forum in Leipzig, Germany. Since then, we have been growing, growing in number, as you can see, but also growing in determination and in, and in readiness. We are organized in three working groups to deliver on strategy matters, data architecture, and user perspectives, while we keep meeting as a full group regularly, both in person and online. So far, we are doing this with our internal in-kind resources and some seed funding generously provided by the Climate Compatible Growth Programme of the UK FCDO, by the FIA Foundation, 
and by Germany, as I said. And thanks to the United Nations Economic Commission from Europe, UNEC, we are in the process of setting the basis and the basic infrastructure to run a database. So we are working in what we call sprints, the sprints to prototype the database and institutionalize it, as well to, of course, identify funding opportunities by May 2023, by this year. And fundamentally, we are also very keen on welcoming to our initiative like-minded entities and individuals that share our vision and can contribute to the data operation, the management and the funding efforts. So, as you might have guessed by now, this is not just about the entities each of us are respectively affiliated to. We are a group of individuals driven by our shared passion for transport data, for measuring what is going on in the transport and climate nexus and therefore being able to improve it. What unites us, as Daniel was uh, alluding to, is the understanding that working together is key to achieving our diverse interests. So here goes a very warm call to all of you joining us in the room and also online. We would be thrilled to welcome you on board the Transport Data Commons Initiative. So thanks very much, colleagues. This is a bit of a, a bit longer than an elevator pitch, but just some snippets of what is behind the vision and what's the story all about. Um, I'm passing it over. Um, I know that Paul is going to tell us super interesting things everything about the prototype because probably you're wondering by now how we're going about the data and perhaps later on as we open the discussions uh, we can tell you a bit more about what is it that uh, new partners can contribute i'm very much looking forward to the uh, open debate and the open discussions of this session which will surely be nourishing the uh, further work of the three working groups that i mentioned to you thanks very much perhaps back to washington or directly to paul <laughs> thank directly you. to paul thank you marusha <laughs> Thank you so much, Marusha. I hope everyone can hear me well. So as Marusha says, I have the very challenging task of summarizing a very immense amount of in-kind contributions that have been made over the past year by TDCI contributors. Um, so I am not going to manage to be as succinct. This is also necessarily going to be quite high level. I don't want to get lost in the weeds of particular data. Rather, what I want to show you is that we look closely with very clear eyes as what has led to this status quo, right? The situation that we find ourselves in all collectively. And then starting from a blank, sl blank slate, we've really asked ourselves, what is needed to address these unmet needs that Marusha has laid out so well? Um, as you'll see, this leads us to a focus on how we organize ourselves to work together as a community on high quality data, the tools and equipment we need to facilitate those interactions. Um, and so we'll see that those bits of infrastructure and community processes, so to speak, are what have been missing. And so by building those as the TDCI, we want to make it realistic to produce the data that we collectively and individually need. So next slide, please. Um, so the, again, I'll, I'll reiterate some of the things that Marusha has said and then take us off into a bit more of a technical direction. Um, as, she, as she laid out, um, there, there is available data. It rarely matches the need. And this leads to very, very high costs in working with data. Next slide, please. Um, one point I really want to touch on is that these um, high costs are a barrier to action and inclusion. So as we've talked about, there are some organizations that have managed to get the resources together, invest heavily, and produce high quality data, use it and share it, but many, many more are being excluded, right? So they want to, they have the desire to apply best practices, methods for assessment and planning, but the cost to find and transform the data are so high, so they have to fall back to something else. And as Marusha said very well, the proliferation of data sources and platforms, as long as they are not interoperable, can increase those search costs and make the problem worse. Next slide, please. So how do we solve these problems? So over the past year, our discussions in the TDCI has really clarified, it's not just more data, new data, data bigger data, but what I would call FAIR data. And this is a rubric that comes from the open science movement. And the FAIR stands for findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. So that has to be at low cost, free of charge, in standard formats, um, interoperable, meaning data has to be easy to understand and simple to use, even if there's ambiguity or idiosyncrasy in the upstream sources, and reusable to pre prevent those wasted resources and duplicated data work. Uh, next slide, please. And one more. Um, so the vision, we use the word commons very consciously, and I want you all to think of, uh, say, the Creative Commons or Wikimedia Commons, uh, in particular Wikipedia. So many millions of people use Wikipedia, 
of those millions, some thousands, some few thousands contribute to and edit the articles that we work on. And that includes uh, putting in you know, lots of useful links and references to material that actually lives elsewhere. And then even smaller, there's a group that build and maintain the website that you see and the systems on which all of this is built and from which so many millions of people derive benefits. So to invert that pyramid, um, this is exactly why TDC is envisioning a commons, right? So we want to build and maintain that core infrastructure, and then we want to invite contributions. We want to coordinate editing from a much a broader group, um, including most of us in the room and on the call. And that will result in data and metadata that's, um, that can be used by very many um, very easily, just as easily as we use Wikipedia. Next slide, please. Um, so from a technical point of view, the pieces that we have in mind for a fully built TDC, uh, first a repository, a place for storing diverse transport data and metadata. Um, the second is pipelines for uh, automated data cleaning and harmonization. Um, most importantly, and where a lot of people are gonna first see the TDC is gonna be a web user interface that lets people explore, visualize, and submit uh, that metadata. And we will build this on shared standards. We will build the tools that we need to do this. And um, we want to make it fair using uh, uh, community processes that will curate some of the priority data that um, we recognize that there's a shared need for. So next slide, please. Don't be intimidated by this. I'm gonna walk you through it, but I just, again, want to give you the sense that we um, have uh, designed uh, a system that would allow us to meet these needs and to do these things that would produce the data that we need. So next slide, please. So as mentioned, the first piece in the blue box is a metadata repository. Metadata, just for those who are not familiar with the term, is information about data, where it comes from, where it actually lives, uh, its structure, who produces it, things of that nature. And then data is the actual observations, the numerical values, and their labels in original formats or some standardized formats. And we intend to set up a repository. This is what some people would call the database, but of course it's uh, a collection of many different data sets. Um, using existing open source tools and by applying the uh, SDMX um, ISO standards that have been built by um, national banks and international statistical organizations. And of course, a lot of that is going to be pointing back to the existing data sources that are maintained by data providers. Again, many of you are in the room on the call. And these, for very legitimate reasons, are varied in their formats, their API, scope, update frequency. Some of those are small collections, some are very large, some have explicit and complete metadata, some don't, right? And we recognize that data does and will continue to live in a variety of different places, but we need to have a catalog that allows us to point to all those, those locations and make them um, uh, commonly uh, comprehensible. And of course, in purple, um, for those who don't have their own data repositories, we do want to guide people and allow them to submit their own data or metadata directly into the TDC. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so then built on that data that we then have, would have uh, connected to or directly in that repository, we would want community pipelines um, or TDC operated pipelines. And a pipeline is just a word for a technical term for a series of data cleaning steps, one or many. Usually or often those are done manually. And this is part of that repeated and duplicated work that we want to um, automate um, in order to make them repeatable, reusable at low cost and very transparent in terms of what's going on. And for those pipelines, the input data and metadata is going to be drawn from the repository and the outputs will be sent back to the repository in common and very well-defined formats. And again, we intend to build this piece of the infrastructure on existing tools and make it available for use by uh, different community groups. We can come back to that. Next slide, please. And again, as mentioned in, uh, in the bright purple box, transportdata.org is going to be where most users, especially data consuming users, are going to have their first encounter with the TDC. So they're going to come to a landing page and according to their needs, um, according to their skill level, and a variety of different user stories that we've developed through talking to potential users, they're going to find their way to different uh, options and features of that uh, user interface. And that can include 
downloading data in various forms through the browser, through an application programming interface. It can include exploring a catalog of metadata um, and then maybe finding their way to some of these other existing data platforms where the data actually lives. Or it can be exploring and visualizing data. And by you know, repeating these colors of uh, blue, orange, and green, what I'm suggesting is that in these catalog and exploring views, we are uniting together and presenting in a single one stop um, data from these many different sources. Right? And through doing these things, we're hoping to really address those uh, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable goals. Right? And again, we recognize there are a lot of data platforms that offer great um, um, uh, visualization and exploration features. We intend to build on those where possible and um, um, provide the features that users know and are familiar with in order to uh, make use of the data for the work they want to do. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so that's the full picture. And again, one more. So once we have this infrastructure in place, what do we want to do with it, right? So how do we actually get out of this, the high quality, reliable data that uh, many of the TDCI partners and contributors thus far, and many of you uh, really want and need? Um, what we would do is we would uh, continually run this community processes working on priority data. So obviously we can't put the same amount of intention, uh, attention into all possible data. But through discussions with the community, we can identify data for which there is a shared need. And uh, some initial examples might be activity data, passenger and freight activity data, vehicle stocks, things of that nature. And then for each of those quantities, we can set a common and target structure for the desired data flow. So that includes identifying the dimensions, uh, mode, technology, gender, things of this nature, right? And then for each of those dimensions, the labels, resolution, coverage, and scope that we want the target data to have, units of measurement, other attributes, and other metadata. So with, with that goal or target, the outline in mind, we can then start looking at the many sources and providers who will be connected to the TDC and say which of these are offering some or all of this data. Next slide, please. Um, with those sources, um, we can make sure that they're connected to, the, mess, uh, to the, the TDC, and that gives us a sort of messy pile. We've swept together some things that might be relevant to produce this priority data flow. Um, with, through inspecting those data as they exist, that will help us identify uh, as, a, as a group um, what, are, what are the necessary steps to clean, relabel, merge, correct, infill, et cetera, uh, those data into uh, produce the high quality data set that we need. And so once we've identified those steps and prototype them, then we can um, put those together as a robust, repeatable pipeline that we can then run on those defined sources and produce a data flow or a sequence of data sets as they are updated um, with that data that we need. And the result of this is going to be that the raw source data, the cleaning process, and the produced data are all going to be visible on the, uh, by the TDC web UI and the web presence. So that's the vision. And just a couple of slides. Next slide, please. And the following. Um, so as mentioned by Marusha, we've got it started on prototyping and building um, with the help of some consultants with the generous hosting of UNECE. Um, and that's involved doing mockups like this, right? So this is not an actual website. We would need the resources to build the actual website, but uh, saying what it needs to look like, what features it needs to have and why, right? Uh, next slide, please. Um, and I, I really wanna emphasize the point that this is building on genuine understanding. So what we've been doing for um, an entire year is talking to would-be users um, those in our networks and now you and others um, to hear what their needs uh, needs are, right? And that's really, I think, the point of today's workshop is to make sure that we've and confirm that we've understood these very clearly, um, whether you're a data consumer or a data provider or sometimes one or the other, right? Um, we've studied existing systems, um, many of the existing data platforms. We've interviewed the operators to get a clear sense of what is needed to set up and operate these. We've distilled out of that requirements, like we've shown in the previous slide, for the different pieces of the TDC. That's what has informed us of this architecture. And again, we've been identifying some existing tools and uh, bits and pieces that we can use to meet some or all of those requirements. And where we're not finding them, that's where we really need to invest to 
uh, to build new tools. Next slide, please. Um, which will be the last one. So the ongoing work uh, prototyping is ongoing in uh, in two um, two lanes. One is building an interactive uh, a graphical mockup or a click dummy um, for this exploratory web interface. And then for the priority data, we are essentially doing a worked example using a small number of data sets and indicators um, uh, to uh, illustrate what those pipelines would have to execute, what kind of data would need to be uh, drawn into and stored in the TDC repository. And then in preparation for actually building the entire um, TDC, just scoping and planning work and estimating the resource requirements. So I'll end there. Um, thank you. Um, and I really look forward to the discussion and uh, happy to answer any clarifying questions either in the chat uh, or from the room.